Sure. Um, coach, I used to play, I used to read this the other night, but this was the, of course, an update. The third game in a row that Liberty haven't had plus 10 advantage on the scoreboard in the fourth quarter. In your opinion, what's been the difference for this team in terms of closing? I think uh, the chemistry that we built last year and the experiences that we had helps us now. And, you know, we settle down. We go, our defense goes to another level. I think our connections even go to another level, regardless of what happens in those other quarters. Um, yeah, so I felt confident going in. And, you know, we had to, we just went to another level. And I think uh, that's the ability uh, that you know really good teams have. Yeah. Uh, Sandy and Sabrina, you want to comment on that? It looks like Sabrina scored or assisted on 18 points in the final 8.30 of the fourth. So what did you see from her in particular that allowed her to take over? And Sabrina, what, from your perspective, how did that look cool? Well, she benched me after a turnover, and I got mad. So... <laughs> I knew I just had to make better decisions, um, you know, understanding my legs were a little heavy and I was, you know, usually make shots that um, I, I missed some of those tonight and just was trying to find different ways to get my teammates open and coming off being a, a shooting threat. It just allowed me to be able to find, you know, be cutting downhill, JJ spacing for a three, Stewie in the corner for a three um, when we needed it. So I think it was just staying patient, but definitely lit a fire up inside me a little bit and came out and knew just we just had to settle down and execute. Yeah, we just a little Play with a little bit more poise. I think we got frantic there for a while with how they're blowing stuff up and we'll try and, you know, we, we weren't moving the ball as crisply as, as, as much as we would like to. And um, it didn't change. I still went, um, I still put the ball in her hands with the action and, and she made really good reads and she was able to score, but that opened up and then we were able to get some easy baskets too. And, you know, obviously JJ was, um, was great in knocking down those threes. Jack. Yes, um, speaking of JJ and knocking down those threes, um, JJ, you talked about in the beginning of the season and how the team's spacing needed to improve. So I'm just curious looking at looking at today, <laughs> that is a strange noise, um, how you'd say the team's spacing has improved since the beginning. And it wasn't just you hitting those threes, it was so much off ball movement, like Sabrina and B cutting. So how do you really, how do you think that's important? Yeah, I think I think we, we've done a better job. We've kind of uh, tweaked some things a little bit and it allows players like me and Sabrina to kind of just get downhill and, and be able to have the space that they need to be successful, but also being able to hit cutters, like you said, um, and allow them to do their thing. So um, I think it's definitely improved um, and, you know, it's going to help us move forward. And Sandy, for you, B put up close to triple double numbers this afternoon. You know, I'm just curious how you've seen her grow as a passer and a communicator on the offensive side. Yeah, look, I think B's been so valuable for us um, all season long, um, and and it just shows you the skill set that she does have. Um, yes, she's a great defender. She usually has to guard the the, the best player on the other team. Um, you know, she can shoot. We're trying to put her in a little bit more isolation so man, we can get, um, you know, opportunities for her to get downhill. But she's also a really good pick-and-roll player. Um, and now, I suppose with Slutty out, it was, uh, allowed us to put the ball in her hands a little bit more, uh, especially, you know, we didn't want Sabrina to have to have the load of, of being the point guard. Um, and it was a good mix-up for us. And, you know, B, B was you know, big for us and continues to be big for us. Yeah. I don't know. In the second quarter, Sandy was sort of motioning the glass and stuff like the glass down a little bit, asking the James to run on the run. How do you think you guys would be able to sort of regain your bearings and sort of get back into the game and really sort of focus the offense in the second half? I think we just have to slow down. Um, we're at our best when we're moving the ball. Um, you know, not taking shots too quickly, just allowing the ball to get from side to side. And when you're playing against a defense like Connecticut, um, you have to make that move because they load everything up and they, they kind of force you to make those extra passes. So once you're making that move and you kind of tire them out a little bit, things open up a little bit more for you. So. Hey, Zach, I noticed in the, the beginning of the game, you were kind of listening to that. And how do you think it's kind of giving up more opportunities for the game by the world to kind of help you kind of attack a little bit more down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it opened up everything. Um, you know, obviously, when there's two on the ball trapping, um, particularly even as high up on the floor as they were, um, I mean, JJ got wide open layup. We were able to just, just understand what we needed to do getting out of it. There's two on the ball, someone's open. And so I think it's just making sure that we're making the right decisions, um, staying poised, understanding, you know, what it is we're trying to exploit when that happens and not letting that speed us up and, and make ill advised decisions.
We'll go over to Zoom, starting with Miles. Hi, all. Congratulations on the win. John Quell, there was a stretch in that third quarter where it felt like the game was starting to get away from you guys, and then you had multiple buckets, a couple of blocks leading to scores on the other end. What was your mentality there in terms of just keeping the team close and both attacking the rim and also hitting, knocking down some shots from outside? Yeah, just staying cool and boys, you know, understanding that, um, you know, there's this run of the basketball and teams are going to be able to, to, to do things that kind of exploit us a little bit, but we have to understand that we can make our own too. But I think that was the biggest thing, not, not getting too high, not getting too low, just staying in here. We'll go to Alfred. Uh, Hi, to uh, piggyback off of that question from Miles, you know, John Quo was everywhere tonight, 22 points, eight rebounds, five assists, four blocks, first time a Liberty player has done that. Uh, just how important is it to have a big that's versatile as John Quo Jones in your lineup nightly? Is that for me? Oh, that, that can be for anybody. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll start. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful luxury to have someone like um, JJ on our team. And, and she does, like, it's a bit like B, she does so much. Um, but just the way that she can I keep saying anchor, I've said that a few times now, she anchors our defense close to the rim and, and her ability to change shots and rebound, but also get inside and, and, and make those big threes. And they were congesting us a fair bit, so we're trying to space them as much as we can. And um, it's a big time player making big time shots, and she brings so much. And some days, you know, it might be harder for us. We have to try and get the ball in a little bit more, but she stays uh, really, you know, as, as, as poised as she can, but knowing that how she can help us. So uh, it's fun to watch, and we're lucky to have her. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, JJ, good game today. Uh, today's matchup kind of felt like uh, the matchup against Connecticut last year in the postseason, where a lot of the games went down to single digits. Uh, difference today, they have Brianna Jones, who missed the second half of the season. Just what did you see from her, and how did her addition to today's game kind of differ in the matchup? Um, I think I think last year we kind of had like a like a definite advantage in the post because of the size and everything, and we knew that we could kind of just go in there and really exploit it. Um, but Reezy coming back in it gives them a bigger body, someone that can bang more in the post, and someone that's more comfortable down there. So um, we knew that we wanted to kind of just make them move a little bit more. Um, I kind of use her being on the court to just congest the floor a little bit with her and AT both being out there. Um, but ultimately, we, we still felt good going into the matchup tonight. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll go over to Lucas. <laughs> um, congrats on the win. My question is for JJ. Um, when you're operating and really moving the offense from the top of the arc as opposed to operating from the post um how comfortable i guess how have you seen your decision making grown from year to year because you're really affecting you know where the ball's going what side of the floor um things like that well i mean i think i think decision making has been good just trying to keep the game as simple as possible someone's holding you from the ball um sabrina's coming up pin downs giving the ball um you know so really just keeping it simple not overthinking it um and I think the, the next area of growth will be just kind of when teams over, you know, pressure me, just being able to get down here and go and pass them so that I can keep them honest because it gets a little bit frantic up there. But yeah, I think my decision making so far has been good. Thank you. We have a few more in the room. Uh, by the way, it's 1961 to 69. Because we talked about your defense. Thank you. Well, actually, it's actually underrated, but um, I know it's early in the season, but. Do you guys feel like this is a statement of sorts? I mean, taking down an undefeated team, you know, coming through with a big win after some of the ups and downs so far, or are you just focused on kind of each game? I mean, I feel like there was, we had every excuse in the book to come in today, um, you know, saying we're tired, our legs are heavy, we've had all these games, uh, we got a back to back tomorrow. There was so many excuses that we could have had coming into this game with, you know, just wanting to not come out and compete and understand, you know, what the task at hand was. And we didn't do that. We, you know, we understood this was a huge game for us, a statement game. They're undefeated. Um, it's huge for the Commissioner Cup. And so we came in here regardless of how ugly the game was looking, how uh, kind of sloppy it was at times. We just stayed poised and played our style of basketball. And I think it's a testament to us. It shows that no matter what adversity we're facing, how we're feeling, we can come out and compete with the best teams in the league. And so I think it, it's growth for us. I don't know if we would have done this last year. I think this would have, we could have potentially been a game we 
might have lost here. And I think for us to be able to show up here and do what we did, um, have everyone contribute off the bench, the starters, um, is huge for us. Coach, I have a question for you. I want to talk about the game of the National League campus in play today. She picked up her third foul, I believe, with 526 to go in the second quarter, but didn't pick up a foul after that. You said before the game, I'm not worried about AT. We have the best player in the game. We have the National League. So, what do you say about the way she cracked down in the second half today? And did so in a physical, but yet, for lack of a better term, legal way? Yeah. I mean, you know, she keeps right to me every single day. Um, you know, B.O. actually was going to take her out. She went, no, no, I'm good. And I'm, I trust her 100%. I know, okay. She knows it because that's how smart she is. She reads things before. She was using her body. You know, she just sees things happen before they happen. Um, but look, it was, um, yeah, thing of beauty for her to just, Continue to grind away, putting the ball in her hair, making those decisions um, when we need it. And, you know, it's hard work playing these fans and chasing one of the best players and getting over screens and then having to switch on to AT is so physical. Um, but she never backs down. And, um, you know, she's just really tough minded. And it was great to see her game continue to evolve with us. Thank you. We'll finish with Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had like a lot of what if the hesitation Yeah, I think I showed that I'm really confident in her. Um, she is, you know, she's a big time player over in Europe. People probably don't know her game as well. Um, he ended, we, yeah, she's a three point shooter. We wanted a to, to shoot there, but she's very active. She's getting on the boards and we saw the last game what happened. But she's not afraid at the moment because she's had the experience in, in, in big time games. Um, but, you know, she went downhill. We want her to, to play her game and, and she's getting more comfortable. It takes time for a new player just to come in and establish the, how they play because those players have to get used to her as well. So it's not, you know, it's twofold here. So, yeah, we have a lot of confidence in her and it's, it's fun to watch her, her just go out and play. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.